God is just asking you tonight, will you trust me? Will you trust me with your life? Will you trust me with everything that you heart desire? Because the Bible says if you commit your ways to me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Will you trust me with that, the Lord says. He says, if you're thirsty, I'll give you drink. If you're hungry, I'll give you food. I'll give you my presence. I'll give you all you need to make it through each and every day of my, your life. But you've got to trust me. Will you trust me with the things that are painful? Will you trust me with the things that are hard to give up? Will you trust me with the easy things? Will you trust me in good times? Will you trust me in bad times? Will you trust me in the in-between times where absolutely nothing's going on? Will you trust me, God says? Will you trust me when the world is freaking out over coronavirus? Will you trust me that I'll protect your household and I'll keep you from getting sick, that I'll keep your loved ones safe? Will you trust me? Will you trust me? And if you're thirsty, I'll give you drink. Thirst for me, God says. Trust me and be thirsty for me. Thank God for his spirit in here tonight. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not wasn't gonna talk about this, but during worship, I feel I, I'm feeling led to, to to just tell you one scripture. But um you know, it was like I think it was yesterday. On Tuesdays I go out a lot to the local medical offices to like I went into this one and noticed a lot of the urgent cares are like filled with people and uh the guy behind the desk said something to me and and he said something he knows i'm a pastor so he made a comment and we we're talking about the virus everybody's talking about this virus and stuff it's like crazy it's so crazy that i asked one of our employees yesterday about how's your daughter doing and she goes oh well, she's great except she woke up this morning and said mommy take my temperature i feel hot i might have the virus and i'm like i'm like this is school's got our kids scared you know, I mean, it's good to be precautious. But when I was growing up, we were taught to wash our hands all the time anyway. Right. And don't touch your face. Keep your hands out your mouth. Amen. So now all of a sudden washing hands is of important of importance, which it's always been. Amen. But um, he said something to me and I said, he said, he said something. And I said, I'm not worried. I'm covered. Right. He said he looked at me. He knew what I was talking about. And then, and there was a room full of people. I said, I mean, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, amen? No coronavirus going to hit me. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, amen? And some people look to me like, huh, God, what, the, what's the, what is Jesus going to do? I'm like, but you know what? I'm covered, amen? But look at this. 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 Look, look, look. Psalm 91, verse 7. First off, it says, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Amen. In verse 10, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. You're like, but pastor, how can that even work for us? Listen, how many remember the story of the first Passover? And how many remember about the blood over the doorposts of that they were told to put the blood over the doorposts? And when the angel of death swept through, the only ones that the firstborns that weren't taken were those who had the blood over the door. So what we need to do is apply the blood over the door and apply the blood over your household. Best cure for any disease is the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Best cure for any hurt arm is the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Best pain reliever on the planet, blood of Jesus, 
Mix it with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can't no Oxycontin beat that. Amen. Amen. You see, it's where you, it's your perspective. If you walk if you go over a place and you know I'm gonna get sick, Corona gonna knock on your door and say, Yeah, hey, you call? I'm here. I'm here. You invited me, you said you want to get sick. Well, let's get it on. Well, instead of being like that, we say, I got the blood of Jesus. I'm covered. My household is covered. Now, we don't go around and, and walk around and walk right. Hey, cough on me. I'm covered. We don't do that. But we, we speak words of faith, and we get the faith, our faith in action. Remember, faith has power. Remember, faith is, has no fear. And just remember that. But turn with me to the book of Isaiah 43, verse 19. This is what I had prepared to come with tonight. But I feel, I mean, I feel like talking about the blood, though. Praise God. Amen. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. It smells. I love the smell in here. Praise God. The sweet aroma of God. Amen. It's amazing how I could find all those elements, ingredients in an essential oil. Praise God. The word of the word, the word of the Lord reads in Isaiah 43, 19, and we'll go all the way to verse 20. It says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me. The dragons and owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Now, now wait. Hold on. First off, he's going to do a new thing. How many ready for a new thing? I am more than ready for a new thing. Amen? You notice how, you know, sometimes God's got to clean up some of the old to bring in the new. Amen? So if, if you feel like you've been going through a redecorating or a refurnishing or a remodeling in your life, get ready because God's going to do a new thing. God's going to bring a new thing into your life. Amen. And, says, and then he's like, you know, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know? In other words, it's going to be so new and so different. It's going to be hard to not recognize that he's doing a new thing. Amen. You may, he may have told you to make a decision that you've been needing to make for years and you've just been putting it off, putting it off, and you finally decide to step out and do it. But then that new thing will come in and bam! You'll be like, yeah, wow! I should have done this years ago. Amen? But it was all part of your process. Don't let the devil beat you up because it took you so long. Be, you know what I'm saying? Just be like, you know what, God, I'm ready now. Well, let's do this. Let's get this new thing going. Amen. I'm ready for a new thing. Amen. I'm ready for some new things in this church. I'm ready for some new things in my life. I'm ready for new things all across the board. Amen. But then it says he'll even make a way in the wilderness. Wilderness is a scary place. Wilderness is 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 um, full of rock. You know, we think wilderness and trees, but and, and forests, but this is referring to wilderness of barren land and, and rocks. And, de- and notice he, he can also brings up the word desert. He's going to bring rivers in the desert. He's going to make a way in a wilderness where you, where you seem lost and you can't find your way. He's going to show you the way out of the wilderness. Amen. He's going to show you how to get out. He's going to do a new thing and bring you out of that wilderness. And then he's also going to give rivers in the middle of dry land or a desert. Amen. Not going to be an oasis. It's not going to see it off in the distance and get there and there's nothing but sand. It's going to be a river flowing in the desert of your life. The life right now that feels dry and parts and got no life in it. God's going to do a new thing and he's going to put rivers of water in your desert. Amen. It's going to be so strong that the beast of the field is going to honor him. People around you are going to be like, oh, my God, what happened to that person? And you're going to be like, it's nothing but the river of God flowing in my life. Praise God. Well, hey. Everybody in your neighborhood got corona but you. It's the river of God. Praise God. Amen. See, whatever happens around you shouldn't affect you because you're a believer in Jesus. Amen. 
Put up that tent of the blood around your life. Then he says, again, he says, I'm going to give, because I give, it says the beasts of the field are going to honor me and the dragons and the animals. It's because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Why does he do it? To give drink to my people. Amen. See, God doesn't want you walking around thirsty. God doesn't want you walking around parsed. God wants you walking around overflowing with his peace, with his love, with his power, and with his spirit. So he's going to pour out a drink of his new spirit over your life. His Holy Spirit is going to consume you, and he's going to do a brand new thing. Come on. Give God some praise and say, thank you for the new thing. Say, Lord, thank you for the new thing you're going to do. You're going to do a new thing. Amen. That stubborn loved one's going to get meek and humble and get saved. Amen. <laughs> the, the ones that are making fun of you for going to church, they're going to stop and start begging for you to bring them to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah 44, verse 3. He says, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. See, if you're thirsty, he's going to pour water on you. If you're thirsty, Jesus said, come to me, I will give you drink. So he's going to pour water on the thirsty. And once again, floods on the dry ground. If you're standing there tonight, if you're online tonight, no matter what country you are in, and I didn't get to check, but I believe Minerva is in Mexico because somebody was watching us from Mexico. And right the same area that she was supposed to be going to, so I don't think it was a coincidence. Amen. And uh, even so, we want us to give a shout out to her. Amen. Amen. But Minerva, if you're watching right now, God's going to put floods on your dry ground. Amen. He, he's going to pour water on you because we know you are thirsty. Amen. And then boys are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. It says he'll pour my spirit upon thy seed and blessings upon thy offspring. See. Notice how he starts with, I'll pour water on those who are thirsty. If you're worried about your kids, get thirsty for God. And let God fill you. Amen? In this world we live in and with all these things going on, before your kids go off to school, apply the blood of Jesus to them. Amen? From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Let their whole class get sick. But I mean, not that we want them to get sick, but we don't want ours to get sick. We apply the blood of Jesus to faith every day. Garrisons of angels, we even ask God to control her thoughts, her actions, who she talks to, who she hangs out with. We, we, we mess her day up. Amen? You got teenagers. You got to. You, you got to talk to the Heavenly Father about your kids. Because you know once they get out in that school, they're on their own. They're like, yeah, buddy, right? Then all of a sudden, Holy Spirit, like, no, 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 no. Your mom and dad covered that this morning. Get over there and hang out with them. Amen? Amen. And he's, he wants to do something new in you. He's, uh, I believe God is tired of the same old, same old. From everybody. Oh, I, 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 we should be, I definitely am. But he is tired I believe he's tired of the same old. God wants to see you every day wake up re-energized and thirsty for him. Not just once in a while. Not just when rent's due. Not just when the fridge is empty. Not when it's 11.50 and your insurance expires at 12 midnight. Should have been be thirsty a week before that or two weeks before, every day before that and watch the insurance not lapse. Put them first in every area of your life and watch them just move in ways that you don't even recognize. Watch him move when you don't even know he's moving. See, God, God, God is sometimes, he's like a chess player. Sometimes God will make moves when you don't even know he's making moves. And then all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, God, you was at work, weren't you, bro? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you was behind, behind, he's a behind the scenes kind of God. But his interest is to do something for you. And, it, and I believe he wants to do something new for, for everybody that's in here. Then in verse 17 of Isaiah 41, he says, When the poor and needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, 
will hear them, and I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in hot places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water, and the dry ground shall spring up water. You see, notice how he uses water a lot in this book. Well, the body needs water to survive. But water is also a type of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. So he's going to bring up the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. I believe he's going to continue to increase the Spirit of God in his house. He's going to increase the Spirit of God in your house. He's going to increase the Spirit of God in your car, in your job, wherever you see. If, if you are yielded to him. If you get in the car and the first thing you put on is some kind of ungodly music. Holy Spirit ain't going to hang out and listen to Kid Rock. Amen? He's not going to listen to Kid Rock or Jay-Z. And you see the Holy Spirit bouncing to Jay-Z? No. Not, no. Put on some Chris Tomlin, no. Put on some Elevation Worship. Put on some Israel Houghton. And they say, you know, you'd be hollering and the Holy Ghost be traveling with you. You'd be in your car. People won't know if you're talking on your Bluetooth or what you're talking to yourself. They'll just notice some excitement going on in your car. And they'd be like, why well, they get on in your car? Because there's a lot more going on in your car than theirs. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> see, if you're thirsty tonight, I believe God will give you a drink. If you're thirsty for a new thing and you need a new thing in your life, I believe God wants to do a new thing tonight. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but tonight. And if you're ready for that new thing, I believe it says here, um, how many times did, did we just speak that? He says, if you're thirsty, I'll give you a drink. If you need me, I'm here for you. That's what these words are saying. Don't worry, I'm here for you. If you need me, just call out to me and I'll give you what you need. Notice not what you want, but what you need. Because sometimes you don't get what you want because you don't need it. I mean, even Mick Jagger figured that out. Can't always get what you want. But you can try sometimes. But you, but you just might find you get what you need. Amen? Thank you for that. That uh, Making sure I knew the words of that old Rolling Stone song, Deacon. Yeah, they want me to fall short. Amen? Even, even Mick Jagger understood that fact. See, God will give you what you need. Sometimes what you need is not what you want. Sometimes what you want, you're not ready for. So he gives you what you need till you're ready so that he can hook you up with what you want. Amen? Amen. So, yeah, like, one of the, the main things is relationships. Everybody wants to be in a relationship. But sometimes you may want a relationship or someone in your life. But it's not what you need right now. Maybe, when, maybe you're not ready to take on a relationship and give somebody else what they need. Maybe you're not ready because you're not close enough to God yet. And he knows, he understands that if I give them a person, it's going to distract them and take them away from me. And I can't have that because they need me. And sometimes we'll push the envelope, push the envelope, push the envelope. And then we'll just step out, make our own decision and then a lot of times we'll try to co-sign for God that he sent them and then realize that, well, maybe he didn't praise God. And then we've got to start the process all over again. God is just asking you tonight, will you trust me? Will you trust me with your life? Will you trust me with everything that your heart desire? Because the Bible says if you commit your ways to me, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Will you trust me with that, the Lord says. He says, if you're thirsty, I'll give you drink. If you're hungry, I'll give you food. I'll give you my presence. I'll give you all you need to make it through each and every day of my, your life. But you got to trust me. Will you trust me with the things that are painful? 
Will you trust me with the things that are hard to give up? Will you trust me with the easy things? Will you trust me in good times? Will you trust me in bad times? Will you trust me in the in-between times where absolutely nothing's going on? Will you trust me, God says? Will you trust me when the world is freaking out over coronavirus? Will you trust me that I'll protect your household and I'll keep you from getting sick, that I'll keep your loved ones safe? Will you trust me? Will you trust me? And if you're thirsty, I'll give you drink. Thirst for me, God says. Trust me and be thirsty for me. And I will make it right for you. I may not give you everything you want right now, but I will not let you go without. Your household will not go without food. Your household will not go without the things that your household needs. But most of all, you will not go without the thing you need most, which is me and my Holy Spirit, says the Lord. You need me more than any. I hear God. I hear God saying to everybody tonight online in here that you need me more than anything else in this world. And in the time we're living in now, you need me more than ever before. Amen. So if you're thirsty. Just say this. Say, if you're thirsty, if you're not thirsty, don't say this. But if you say this, say, Lord, I'm thirsty. Not for earthly water, but for you and your presence and your spirit. And, Lord, I ask you, give me drink right now, right here. Fill me with the refreshing of your Holy Spirit. And I thank you. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen. And drink that up in Jesus' name. World Harvest Worship Center, reaching our world, one life, one city, one nation at a